BYD has a clear vision of the future of the car, and it goes beyond electrification. Producing electric vehicles is just one step towards the transition to self-driving cars. But in this transition, there is so much technology involved that the car industry can be considered the next innovation center. This is the opinion expressed by Stella Lee, the Executive Vice President of BYD and CEO of BYD Americas. Take a listen. Cell phone and like a tablet industry used to be the innovation center, but now the innovation center is the auto industry. So actually, maybe some background, BYD, uh, like maybe 80% of people already use BYD product. If you use pad or phone, one third of smartphone were produced by us. I was a C C former CEO for BYD Electronics Division. So at that time, it's an innovation center. Everybody talking about what's high tech, what's the future technology there. And but now it's totally different. It's in the car industry. Uh, like uh, during Beijing Auto Show, you, you will see you go there, it's own like an uh, innovation center, innovation yeah. show. Because everybody, doesn't matter uh, which OEM, talking about uh, like uh, has better, maybe precise vision technology to help for auto, auto drive. Then they have uh, maybe new sensor technology to cut the cost down and then to, you can enable to have the maybe more uh, like a radar or maybe um, AOB or the technology into the car to make the car is become more intelligent. So and the, in the everybody knows like uh, for the car industry the first half uh, is to do electrification. Then the second half we already start now is to do auto drive. When you do automatic driving, you need a lot of technology from vision and the better camera, better software, and then you need to have a better sensor technology. So when you're talking about sensor, it's not only leader, radar, and also camera, but all kinds of uh, like a, a sensor you need to detect in the high speed stuff moving around in the like a storming like a uh, weather. You need to still be able to identify identify is a storm or is a human. So this is also you need a fast, quick uh, like a calculation. And then also talking about mapping, you need to have a very precise mapping. And then so all this kind of technology become like a auto industry become the hub of innovation. This will bring a lot of investment opportunity all the way to the supply chain, to the software, to the chipset, all the way to the integration company. Right. A lot of opportunity to invest. BYD is now in already 70 countries and based on this global experience, the CEO is confident that the development of the electric car market will follow the same pattern in any new country. Stella Lee seems to have no doubts about this evolution. We are the expert, we are global leader for uh, uh, renewal energy car. So we see every country, the first majority adoption will be PHEV. People will experience their EV, the first one is PHEV. And then after that, so after several years driving, they build up confidence, then they have a charger, they know how to charge the car. So then the new replacement, 70% will buy the EV. So that's the US is like a one step to go to the BEV. I think that's missing. If we have more PHEV model be available, this will accelerate the adoption. In a previous video, we also talked about the exponential demand for electricity that is concerning many industry leaders, Elon Musk in particular. The CEO of BYD Americas has a solution also for this. The second point, like Eric, uh, because BYD is one of the players for solar panel battery storage, mm -hmm. we think you do have a lot of solution for electricity, it's just a decentralized generation. And then we have the U.S. is a big resource for the uh, like a uh, like a uh, rocket gas, yep. and also CNG. Andrew, you mentioned this one can be decentralized mini generation for that is more effective. Yeah. And then plus in California, then everybody knows in California we have very strong action for the climate change. So by 2035, all the our generation will be uh, renewal generation. So yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Now it's what happened, but because of why? Because you have enough solar, you have gas generation, they have battery storage. So like 
if you deploy a lot of battery storage. Who agrees? Who agrees? Raise your hand. More recently, BYD stocks went up because the tariffs imposed in Europe on Chinese imports were not as high as expected. Therefore, BYD anticipates more opportunities in the coveted European market. Nevertheless, there is a fear that dealing with BYD means dealing with the Chinese government, something that BYD executive rejects. Stella Lee instead invites to focus on consumers like TikTok does. It's not fair. It's not a, uh, like a true space. So uh, I think uh, like a TikTok is uh, totally like a uh, consumer driven. Right. Then they put their database in with Oracle, right. so U.S. company. So I don't. I think this uh, chart even President Biden used TikTok. So why they need to ban this one? It's like a, it's against uh, constitution for the people's free speech, free to use. And the second, uh, then Huawei is a different case. That's a different, right? But then for BYD, and uh, we are the industry, we do the car. So this is, in the end, is consumer choice. So then if like a BYD is a global company now, every place also, like a, we have a very high standard for ESG requirement. That's the most of private company driving for EV is because ESG, top standard. And then we have the top standard for CSR. And then BYD did not run business in Russia in Cuba and the Iran, Iraq, because we don't want to position us in the some area is sensitive, then we, we, we follow. Then we really well position BYD's global company and uh, make our brand is more uh, like a high respect, admire brand in the, like a, in the industry. So, but the current, because of political, maybe some lobby or like a other very complicated uh, base, Make it U.S. is no longer become like an open market. So this is why U.S. is strong because we are open market. All the smart people come here to compete, bring the best product, benefit all the consumer. So, but now is I saw like U.S. become very protect market. It's not a benefit for the uh, industry. What creates obstacles to the development of these markets, according to the Chinese executive? is in most cases the lack of a clear plan. They can listen. We believe like a future mobility is electrification. There's no backwards. There's no chance for the ice car in the future will still survive. So, but in the future, we think is the BEV and the PHEV combination will really uh, deliver the whole solution. Now the uh, big challenge in different country, then you have the, some country lack of government uh, like a policy to support that direction. And some country, we have policy, but we don't have enough charging infrastructure. And some country, like here, government gave different opinion. <laughs> so it's very confused to the OEM, confused to the uh, like a consumer. So I think uh, uh, China did a very good job. They are very solid from day one. And then <laughs> 10 years ago, they mentioned they want to start to pushing electrification, they start giving incentive. And now incentive is gone, but now is every activity was led by the like a policy. And then the consumer loved, start to have a lot of experience for electric car, then they enjoy the electric car. The buy the electric car is not because incentive or policy now, it's just because it's a high tech, then it's a cool car, it's a very high performance car, high quality. So in Q1 in China, EV penetration is more than 40%. Yeah, yeah. it's incredible. So it's a demonstrate very big success. Like they saw this incentive in the beginning, time, maybe 15 years ago, start with buses, electric buses, and then taxi, and then like all this, like pushing the policy to build the charging infrastructure. And then you give the initially the incentive they gave to passenger car is twelve thousand dollar cash, so manufacturer have to collect uh, from Chinese government, but the consumer get a benefit. But now and then that's make the EV penetration start with like a uh, like a zero percent to maybe five percent, and then in maybe ten years, and then from five to ten percent within two years. And then after that, from 10 to maybe 20% in one year. So now it's like a, we saw the like a last year, the average EV penetration is 32%. But in Q1 this year, it's reached to 
40%. But, uh, 40%. but then this kind of very solid, sustainable, like a clear policy help to have several results. First is uh, driven, consumer driven, market driven. So a lot of people build up charging infrastructure. So if you go to China, at the airport, at the hotel, at the every place, you will <coughs> easily find the, like a public charging. Yeah. And then second is you like actually boost a lot of innovation. And finally, innovation is important not only because it improves the consumer experience, but also because it helps to fight climate change. Take a listen. Two. Um, because the one thing is, it uh, doesn't matter what's your political position, but uh, all the human beings share the same planet. For climate change, it's everybody's responsibility. Doesn't matter you have a different position, different country, we need to work together to find a solution for that. That's like a fundamental. So. And then, but we did not see uh, like a still good construction, maybe a solid way to work to that direction. So we hope maybe after election, it's where everything will back to normal. People will be more solid thinking about uh, the, what's the future solution here.